For the following exercises, solve each inequality and write the solution in interval notation. Okay, so this is the first video in this playlist that we're dealing with inequalities, um, solving for inequalities with absolute values. So we'll kind of take it a little bit slow and then, and then we'll pick up the pace. Okay, so the first one, it says that the absolute value of x minus 2 has to be greater than 10. Now, remember, the alligator, right, is chomping on the bigger side. So I always like to envision that this is like an alligator mouth. You see, like, the teeth. So it's chomping, chomp, chomp, on the bigger part. So since it's chomping this way, that means that this has to be bigger than this side. Just as a, just for reading these uh, signs. Okay, so the absolute value of x minus 2 has to be greater than 10. We have to basically still solve for x. But now there's a little bit of a different way that we're going to do this than um, if this was an equal 10. We've done tons of examples in which the absolute value of x minus 2 would equal 10. And what do we do? We separate the two. We're going to kind of do the same thing, but we need to set it up in an inequality versus an equal sign. So what we do is the first thing, we have to get the absolute value by itself on one side of the inequality. You could basically treat this as an equal sign, but it's still an inequality nonetheless. So we have that, right? I don't have like two times the absolute value, or I don't have, you know, two minus the absolute value of x minus two. It's just the absolute value on this side. So we're ready to do the next step. Now, if it was an equal sign, we would split it up into two. But now with an inequality, we need to introduce the negative 10 as well. Remember, it could equal 10, but there's a secret negative 10 that it could equal. So we have to put that somewhere in here. And how we do that is we put the same inequality on the other side of the absolute value. So it's on the right in this case. I'm going to put the same sign. You see how it's literally the same sign? I'm not going to switch it. I'm not going to go like this. It has to be the same sign as what was given here. So since this is a greater than, I have to put a greater than here. And now we're going to put the other number, the negative value, negative 10. This is a sure way in which you won't make any mistakes when you're breaking up your two equations. So now we have our two equations, and I'm going to rewrite them. So we have a negative 10 is greater than the absolute value of x minus 2. And then we have the absolute value of x minus 2 was greater than 10. Do you see that? It's super, super, super important that you have it in this notation. I can't just, you know, put it on this side even though this would be correct, but some students maybe would make a mistake and put the wrong sign. This way, in which you set it up like this, and you literally copy as you see it, is a sure way that you won't make any mistakes. Now we're ready to do the math for both equations. So this is how you would set up your inequalities to make them into both equations, just like we did when it was an equal sign. Now remember, once you have your two equations, you can get rid of the absolute value sign. You don't need it anymore because you have your two separate equations. So let me just bring this closer. And now we're ready to solve. So let's do the top one first. We're still going to treat this kind of like an equal sign. So we want x by itself. It's being subtracted from 2. So do the opposite, plus 2 plus 2. The 2's will cancel, and you get negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8 is greater than 
x. That's our first equality or inequality. That's our first answer. That either negative 8 is greater than x or x just has to be less than negative 8. Now let's work on the second one. You still want to get x by itself. There's a minus 2 here, so I'm going to plus 2, plus 2. That cancels out. So x has to be greater than, the alligator's chomping on the x, 12. And there is your other answer. So we have our two x values. Now we just have to show it in interval notation. So this is going back to when we did interval notation. I believe we have a, a, a playlist for domain uh, and range. So check that out on the channel. It's on the front page, the home page of our channel. All right. So this will kind of just be like a review. So this is saying that x has to be less than negative 8. There's no stopping. It just has to be less than negative 8. So it can be less, less, less than, than negative 8, basically all the way until negative infinity. So that's the first part, right? You can go from a negative infinity all the way to a negative 8. Now, it is not including the negative 8. It is not less than or equal to, right? Or negative 8 is greater than or equal to x. So I have to put a bracket, uh, sorry, I have to put a parenthesis here. A bracket is when you're equal to, but if it's not, it is a parenthesis. And just know that a parenthesis is always with your infinities, whether it's negative infinity or positive infinity, all right? And since this isn't an equal, you have to put a uh, parenthesis with that one. Let's try this one. It says that x has to be greater than 12. So 12 is the point that you need to start at. Are we including 12? No, because it's not greater than or equal. So 12 with a parenthesis all the way to infinity, because it just has to be greater than 12. There's no stopping it. And infinity is always with a parenthesis. Now we have our two answers. And either one could be correct, right? So it's called a union. We use the U to make the two of them together. Now, generally, you'll always put the negatives first, and then comes the positive infinity. So in this case, it would be negative infinity, comma, negative 8, parenthesis. U stands for union, which is like and. And then you have your 12, comma, infinity. So all parentheses here, because you didn't have a equal sign, greater than or equal to. So that's the answer. Now, if you just wanted a quick um, rundown as to what, what the heck this actually means, <laughs> if we drew a graph, right? And remember, an absolute value graph is always a V-shape, whether it's a V or it was flipped, it's, so, it's like a mountain peak, or it's like a, a V. So here are your two numbers, negative 8 and 12. So let's just say that negative 8 was over here, and let's just say that 12 was over here. At some point, the, the graph is going to basically cross these. And let's just say that this is the V, right? These are not included, so they are open circles on the x-intercept. And it's just showing you that, you know, all of the x values can either be all the way this way into negative infinity land, or we could have all the x values in the positive infinity land. Anything is fair game. The x's are just not going to be anywhere in the middle. That's basically what this is saying. Okay. So now... Let's do the same thing for the second answer. So hold on, let me just bring this over here because this looks nice. Whee! Okay. So in order for us to do that separation with our inequality, we need to get the absolute value by itself first. So this is two times the absolute value of v minus 7 minus 4, which is greater than or equal to now, 42. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get that V by itself. I'm going to add 4 on both sides. That will cancel this out. So I get 2 times the absolute value of V minus 7 is greater than or equal to 42. I want to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2. And I do that on the same side over here. The 2 gets canceled out. And I now have the absolute value of V minus 7 is greater than or equal to 42 divided by 2 is 21. Okay, so we have this right end, and we only have the absolute value now. So now we just have to get the left end. Remember, you keep the same sign. So now it's going to be just like that. And instead of 21, it's going to be negative 21. And there are your two equations. We have this one, and then we have this one. You will put the absolute value for both equations. One is just going to be negative 21 on the left, and then the other one is going to be 21 on the right. So let's write it out. So we have negative 21 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of v minus 7, and then we have the absolute value of v minus 7 is greater than or equal to 21. And once you separate them, we can get rid of the absolute value signs, you know, clean it up a little bit, and then we're just going to solve. So if we do the top one, if we solve for v, we're just going to add 7 to both sides. So negative 21 plus 7 is negative 14. So negative 14 is greater than or equal to V. That's our first one. And then for the second one, plus 7 on both sides. That cancels out. So V is greater than or equal to 28. And there's our second one. Now we just have to put it into interval notation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this part because I can put it up here. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. Negative 14 has to be greater than or equal to V. So V has to be less than negative 14. Less than or equal to. So basically, you could have anything from parentheses negative infinity all the way to negative 14 because v is less than, if I'm reading it backwards, v just has to be less than or equal to negative 14. So it could be negative infinity. But now since I'm including 14, I put a bracket. U. Now let's work on the next one. V is greater than or equal to 28. Since I'm including 28, it's a bracket. And it could be greater than, so it could be anywhere to positive infinity. But since it's infinity, it needs to be a parenthesis. And that is your second answer. Not bad. OK, last one. This one is already nice and pretty for us because it's Everything on the left-hand side is trapped in between that absolute value. So they're saying that the absolute value of 3x minus 4 has to just be less than or equal to 8. But now we know that we just need to put the same sign and put a negative 8. And now we have our two equations. So let's write them out. Negative 8 is less than or equal to the absolute value of 3x minus 4. And then the absolute value of 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 8. Let's do the top one first. We've got to solve for the x. And remember, once you break it up, you can get rid of your absolute value signs. So if you want to just you know, jump to that, you can totally do that. I'm just showing you the breakdown. So now let's solve for x. 3 times x minus 4, so I have to plus 4 on 
both sides. So negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4, which is less than or equal to 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Negative 4 over 3 has to be less than or equal to x. Okay, so that's number 1. And then let's do the second one. We're going to plus 4 on both sides. So we have 3x is less than or equal to 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3. We get x has to be less than or equal to 4. Okay. So here's our two answers. So let's see here. Um, it just says that we need x to be less than 4, okay, but it needs to be greater than negative 4 over 3. So here are your limits, right? So there's, there's really no infinity here because, oh, sorry about that. There's no infinity here because you're basically your x is trapped in between two of them, right? So your x can be less than 4 but greater than negative 4 over 3. So I'm just going to write it in a different notation because since there's no infinities, um, we're going to say x is in the middle. And actually, I guess I'll put it up here. x is in the middle. It has to be greater than or equal to negative 4 over 3. And then it just has to be less than or equal to 4. And that's it. So you could either say it like that. You can do it as brackets. So you could say negative 4 over 3, comma, 4. That's another way of interval notation. And they're both brackets because they're both equal to each other. But either way... Either one of them works. Yeah? Okie dokie. So this one is all good, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you thought. Hopefully this guy this helped you. Um, and if you want to help us out, tell your friends. Tell your classmates. Tell, you know, anybody who's having trouble with math. We got you guys covered. All right? So I will see you guys all in the next video. Have an awesome day. Happy studying. Take care. Bye-bye.